Apier is going to get another year at Florida, which feels like it's maybe the biggest upset of the college football season because coming into the year, the entire discussion around the Florida Gators was who is going to be the next coach? Who is going to fill in for Billy Napier when he gets fired? When is he going to get fired? And he is not going to. Scott Strickland, the athletic director for the Gators, today released a statement saying, hey, we are not going to fire him. We are moving forward with him as our head coach. He's our guy. And I think there's probably two ways to look at this. There is the cynical side, which is, hey, Florida doesn't want to or can't afford to pay his buyout right now. And I think the entire NIL world revenue sharing I think that's going to have an effect on coaching contracts and buyouts and things like that. You might see coaches continue to be the head coach of a program just because when you are already asking boosters and donors to donate to your NIL collective, going to them for extra money to fire a coach that you might have hired if you're an athletic director is – an admission of like, hey, I got this wrong and I need your help to bail me out. And when you're already begging those people for money, it kind of sucks to go back to them for more money to bail you out of a situation that you put yourself into. I think it's really easy to ask those people for NIL money. And obviously it's a little different. I'm not the one doing it, but I think that's a really easy thing to ask for, right? It's like, hey, for us to continue to be competitive, for us to continue to get the best recruits, for us to be active in the transfer portal, we need your help bringing the best players to our university. And those rich old white dudes love that. And so they feel like they're a part of the program that like that quarterback right there, that left tackle, that wide receiver is here because of my money. When you're like Jimbo Fisher is no longer at Texas A&M because of my money, it's a little bit different. You don't necessarily wear that with the same amount of pride as you do bringing a player into your program that somebody's successful you can feel like you are a part of that you are a part of the reason why your favorite team favorite program university is succeeding rather than we're no longer sucking because of me and so that's one way to look at it i think is that you can just say hey florida's like there's going to be revenue sharing there's nil etc We don't want to be tied down to this gigantic buyout. So that's one way. I think the other way to look at it is there's light at the end of the tunnel for Florida. There is something tangible that you're like, you know what? We're not that far away. And when you look at it and think of it that way, like they're four and four, right? And the five game stretch to end the season doesn't look nearly as daunting as it did at the start of the season. Is Texas still a gigantic challenge for them? Yes. Is hosting LSU and Ole Miss back-to-back, it's still a little bit like, okay, those are teams that are on the cusp of the college football playoff. But are they completely unwinnable? No. Florida State was a top-10 team to start this season, and they beat nobody. (laughs) They got a win over Cal at home by five. Otherwise, it has been a bad year for the Knowles. There is still a chance that, like, against all odds, Florida could go bowling in 2024. Which, coming into the season, the talk was like, okay, are they going to win three games or are they going to win four games? And right now, they're already at four and four. So, there is a light at the end of the tunnel in that aspect for 2024, let alone for the future. DJ Lagway looks pretty good. DJ Lagway looks like he can be a future star. The part of the process of his development continues to be like, we got to make sure nobody else poaches him from us. But he's been pretty good, or at least good enough to give you hope that we can get this thing rolling. And I know that the kind of the instant reaction from Florida fans is like, oh my God, what are we doing? But I don't know that that's fair. I think that there's still a chance. Like, do I think that Florida is on the cusp of winning a national title with Billy Napier as their head coach in the next four or five years? No, probably not. 
And to some aspects of the fan base, is that good enough? No. And I completely and wholly understand that faction because when you have a history that includes national championships, to settle for anything else feels like you're accepting mediocrity. And so I understand that and I get that completely. But at the same time, would you prefer to go back to the the Will Muschamp days, the Ron Zook days? Because while Billy Napier might not be the guy who's going to lead you to the promised land, he's also not, I don't think, the guy who's going to completely torpedo and tank your program and lead you to needing to hire somebody who has specialized in reclamation projects. And that is... That's a difficult place to be and a difficult pill to swallow, right? Because everybody wants the best. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to be a member of the winning team. But being the member of the team that goes eight and four or nine and three every year, sure as hell beats the being a member of the team that goes five and seven or six and six every year. And so the thing that I would ask Florida fans is I think a similar question to what Penn State, I would ask Penn State fans, or I would ask Ohio State fans, or when Jim Harbaugh was struggling in Michigan. Who are you going to get that's better? Who are you going to get to replace your coach that you are unhappy with that is a definitive upgrade? And for Florida, what is the answer to that question? Because I think Florida fans would tell you, oh, Lane Kiffin would come here in a second. And I don't know that he would. I think Florida fans would probably tell you, like, okay, Kurt Signetti, the Indiana head coach, would come here and be an upgrade. You don't know that. You don't know that. It, it's not that long ago that Tennessee ran Philip Fulmer out, a coach that had sustained success but had kind of started to drop off in that success. And you know what happened to Tennessee's program? They tanked. <laughs> they went to the bottom of the barrel, and they had to work their way back up. And so if I'm sure if you were to ask Tennessee fans, would you rather take 8-4 and four and 9-3 and three Phil Fulmer every year, or would you rather take 5-7, and 6-6 six and six Derek Dooley? W would you rather have that Butch Davis? Which would you rather have? Did that Butch Davis. Is that, did I get that wrong? They didn't have B Butch Davis is the old Browns coach, right? Uh, Butch, what's his name? Uh, Butch Jones. Butch Jones. Yeah, yeah. My, I got my basic last names incorrect. But would you rather have Derek Dooley and Butch Jones, or would you rather have Philip Fulmer go eight and four, nine and three every year? I think that's a really simple question to ask. Now, nobody wants to be in that situation where they have to answer that question, and I wholly understand that. But that's some of the reality of college football is not everybody gets to be on top anymore because when you've consolidated all of these conferences, all of these powers, right, It's we're not that far removed from Penn State being a power, Nebraska being a power, Oklahoma and Texas being a power, Florida, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, USC, Washington, Georgia Tech, Boston College, Miami, when you put all of them together, not everybody gets to stay on top. And does that messaging suck? Yes. So Florida, I think, needs to understand its place in the college football pecking order. Are there things that work against it? Yes. Do I think it's one of the best jobs in America? Yes because of location, because of recruiting base, because of donor support, fan support, et cetera. Yes, it is a great job. But who are you going to get that's significantly better and a gigantic upgrade from Billy Napier that you feel down to your core, deep in your bones, that is going to be the person that leads you back to the promised land? Because the answer to me is, I don't know. And when you don't know, you got to deal with the devil you do know or the devil you don't know. Billy Napier is the devil Florida knows. And is he going to take them to where they want to be? Probably not. But he's probably not going to take them down with him either. 
And sometimes you got to find the bright spot and the silver lining in that situation. And that's where I think they are and need to be. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out. If you're listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. I'll see you Sunday for another episode of the Daily Huddle.